Hi guys, it's Jean from Jean's Gems. I've been away for a little bit, but I have a couple things to show you. Just real quick things, and then um, I promised my friend Terry that I would give a little tutorial on how I make my um, boho beads. So um, let me show you first of all if you're familiar with any of my previous videos um you know that i am now um making digitals for my coffee shop and i wanted to share with you what i've done with my first set of digitals i worked with them um, a little bit and came up with a couple cute designs so um the the images that I have, I call them the Tea Time Ladies. Some of them do have little teacups in their hand, as you can see, um, but they're very um, beautiful, fancy. They even have, some of the backgrounds have little castles in them. So um, lots of beautiful colors. And they are free. There's, I think, three pages, and you're welcome to um, get those on my coffee shop, which I will leave a link in the bottom. Uh, the project that I have for you today, these are just little um, matted cards. You can use them as journaling cards. You can use them um, to make an actual gift card, like a thank you card. Um, I used a square doily and I used the image, inked the image around the side with some purple ink. Then I did this little ruching with some beads and some of my medallions that I had made. Um, I can link that video for you if you'd like to watch it. And then I used these French labels from Kim Newberg's coffee shop and I painted them a metallic gold. Now, if you go, are going to use these as um, a little card, you know, to make a gift card with, you can just attach this right to the top front of the gift card. Um, you can then use some of your word stickers if you have any from Tim Holtz or that you've gotten somewhere else and just make a little sentiment here. You can put it right over top the gold. Um, and I made um, them so that there would be three that have the ruching and the beading with this fabric I made on the right side and then three on the left side. So they're all similar in design, just different ladies. And they all have my little medallion on them and um, my handmade fabric. So that is what I have been working on as of late is the fabric designing. I uh, w had stamped some denim fabric for my poppy journal that I did um, for Kim Newberg and I just kind of ran with it from there. I have some light, um, very light muslin. Um, it's see-through, it's very, it's not sheer, but it, it, it's just a light weight. Um, I love this because when you dye it or um, paint it, whichever you decide to do, it makes it sturdy enough to make your beads or whatever you want to um, design with it. But in addition, I love how it tears and it gives you this rustic edge. So that was what I used to dye my fabric. I made a couple pieces um, with different colors of dilution zinc spray and some stencils. So I got some reds, blue, and then I took a metallic acrylic marker, like a Posca pen, um, and shook that up and then just kind of um, splattered 
the the color onto the top, which I gave, which I thought gave it another interesting definition. And here's another one. Now this one I tried to use a brush to do it, and the brush wasn't cooperating, so I just kind of um, unloaded the brush here, and I think it'll still be fine once I. Um, because I'll be cutting this up and, and making different things with it. And this one also came out really vibrant and has some of the stenciling design in it, you can see. So the ink is not permanent ink. So I've been debating on whether I want to wash it with just a little bit of like baby soap or something that would um, not be too harsh. Even if it fades a tiny bit, I'm okay with that, but I just wanted to soften it up a little bit more. However, based on what it is, what it looks like now and how it, it functions now, it's stiff enough that it makes a really nice um, boho bead. Now, the boho beads um, that I make, um, just a little disclaimer, I'm not a professional beater at all. I do what's functional for me, and this is the style that I have come up with based on looking at other designs that creators have made. Um, what you need for your boho beads is basically a fabric, a, a lace, you can use burlap, you can use ribbon, you can use book paper, newspaper, you can use scrapbook paper, <coughs> any kind of lightweight paper that you may have and um, you can make a bead. Now you need to have a dowel or a something that you can wrap the fabric around to make a tube. So you can use a screwdriver, you can use a and one of the one of the ladies I watched she used an ice pick. Um, you can use a paintbrush. You can use different sizes of dowels. I just have a little um, tiny one here that I use. Um, but you can use, a, you know, a straw. People have used straws. So use whatever you find is functional for you. So I am going to cut this material oh and and for your wire I just happen to have this in my stash but it's a 20 gauge and you can get this probably at pretty much any of your stores where you can pick up crafts um, this I just had in my stash so I'm going to use the gold today I have, you can get it in silver and maybe rose gold too, but I'm not 100% on that um, because I have rose gold, but I think it's a thicker, it's not 20 gauge. So the reason the 20 gauge is nice is because it does wrap well and it does also make a nice loop at the top. Now, this is one that I, I just made. Um, with the fabric and you can see by looking at the loop I'm nowhere near professional so any of you um, beading experts out there are probably going to cringe when you see my um, my wire wrapping and my um, beading skills so I apologize for that ahead of time now you can cut your fabric or you can tear it. I tried to make it in sort of a triangle shape, but I, if you use a long piece like this, this is what? Um, so 
this must be centimeters 26 25 centimeters so I would cut this in half because the longer you have the uh, the the less or bulky or the bulkier your beads going to be in the center so if you just have two pieces that are right around like a four or five inches that's probably perfect for um, a nice bead now on some of these other ones that I have already made you can see some of them are very long now that's a paper one um, this blue jean one is longer so it just depends on how long you want your bead to be when you actually you know the lengthwise here depends on how wide you cut the fabric as well as depending on how thick you want the bead to be then that is determined by the length so i hope that makes sense so what i'm going to do is use my little dowel wherever i put it okay baby where did you go it's okay i have another one i think i got these my husband got these for me by accident i wanted thicker ones but they've come in handy i love them so what i do is and i'm gonna hold this up a little bit so you guys can see hopefully um i'm going to lay the dowel right on the edge of the fabric okay and then i'm going to begin to twist and what that does is it just twists up the fabric so as you go, you want to just twist it. You can maneuver it if you want it to go more to the left or more to the right or just keep it centered. You just keep going around the dowel by rolling it up like this, okay? And then when you get to the end, you take some pretty um, sticky glue. You want like a tacky glue or something that's gonna glue rather quickly and that's not super runny or it'll be messy. Um, also, I recommend not using a glue stick because I don't know how well that would stick. So I just tighten that across the side there and then I roll it like this. Okay. And what that does for me is it just makes sure that the ends are down and that we have a nice round shape. If you see any of your ends sticking up, just put a tiny bit of glue in there and press it down. So there I have um, a bead. Now, as far as leaving any of these little stringy things, that's certainly up to you. They don't bother me. They add more to the boho look of this. So what I do is I slide it off of the dowel and here we have a bead. So we will take some of our wire. Now I take probably a good um, 12 inches or so when I'm doing this because you you have to do some wire wrapping what in the world i un i undid the wrong end bear with me a second here the more wire you have the more wrapping you can do of course but um so I would just gauge your wire based on the length of your bead and also how many other beads you're gonna be adding to the top of it. So the first thing I need to do is make some type of loop. So I've seen these loops done online like 25 times and I still can't really figure it out. 
So I just make a fat loop however I want. It doesn't have to be completely circular, just so that you get a loop on the top, okay? And then I start beading. So let me see what beads I have here. I wanted to use, now um, you can use things like spacer beads and bead caps and um, all different kinds of bead um, elements to your design, but you honestly don't have to be that um, particular because I want you to use what you have and not feel like you have to go out and buy special bead findings um, to make your your beads because it's just you know it's not necessary to have all those extra um, bead caps and spacers. A nice thing for spacers if you want to break up like three or four big beads at one time is to use little seed beads in between and that works just fine as a, as a spacer bead so i put this purple one on the top and because this is gold i'm going to try to find i don't know what i this might be mainly silver all that i have in there so let's see we will use one of these. These are called rondelles. Now don't ask me how to bead, but I do know some of the names. And what's this? This must be another purple one. So we'll just put it on. Okay, so here we have the top of our, our bead with our quonky little um, loop. Okay. Then we are going to put on here our fabric bead. Okay. So we're just going to add that to the stack of beads. And then we're going to find a bead. Um, I thought I had some other big funky ones in here, but I don't see any. Let's see what do we have here, darling. Okay, I'm not sure what color this is. This might be black. I can't tell if it's black or purple but I'm okay with whatever color it is. And I need to find another color. And we will take, um, since that's a black, let's just take one of these little purple jobbies here. Okay. So here we have basically um, our bead design, okay? So our tail of our wire is out here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend this down. Now, um, someone who was more adept at wrapping may wrap in between each bead. I don't, I don't do that. So I wrap, I create just a long line here, and then I wrap around the end of the bead, the um, boho bead, the, the fabric bead, because I want it to um, match in with the, the, the actual um, beads that I am, the real beads that I'm using. Then I'm going to go around it like this and wrap it. And then when I get to the very end, I'm going to wrap it again. 
around here. Now, I have extra left over, so we could go back and then re-wrap some more around this part here. Now, to me, boho design is a, it's like a eclectic style or something that that doesn't give me the idea of everything being perfectly shaped or perfectly um it's kind of more of a whimsical design is what i'm trying to get at i think so with using um the wire wrapping method you get uh, a whimsical design you are able to wrap it in different ways so that you can hang things from it and that's basically why now I have to clip that little edge off and I don't know where my other tiny clippers are but so just be careful if you do have an edge that you can't seem to get pressed down properly, you can take a little um, nail file to it and, and file off the rough edges. But I wanted to explain why I leave this larger part here is because when I'm hanging the bead, I may want to hang some charms or something off the bottom. And I think that's a really cool option. Um, to have that, you can also hang something from this this middle um, wire as well. So it gives you um, some options for making yourself a, a really huge dangle and using this as your centerpiece and hanging all kinds of things from it. So that is my basic take on the boho bead so you you just wrap the bead around whatever you decide to use for the size of hole you want in your bead and then from there you add the beads as you like and then wrap wrap it together so it all stays together so there's another one of mine added to my collection i have um so many now that I've made and I've used all different materials so I've used some burlap I've used um, some fibers I've used denim paper uh, muslin here's some more denim ones I've used some paper that's more like craft paper and I've used these big huge beads and just all uh, this one I use some uh, scrapbook paper and it was really thick so that's why it looks like that and then I have a bunch more of the denim ones and this one I just made with red and this big bead here and here's another one I, I made with my painted fabric here's one that's made out of book paper and with these that are made out of book paper, you can actually um, take some of your distressed ink and distress those as well if you'd like. And here, these are mostly, here's another one with the fabric. These are mostly denim and paper. So as you can see, once you get started on these, they're so fun to make and you can make tons of them in a little bit of time. 
So get yourself some 20 gauge wire and I'm sure you have ribbon and you have denim and you have lace and all kinds of things that you could use. Now, for example, with the, I was thinking with um, lace, you could uh, use a denim one, kind of like this thick one, and then just put a piece of lace on top of it and it'll give it another effect. So, I really have enjoyed making these, even though they might not be the right way, they're the functional way for me. So these are some that I made out of some denim that I had painted with metallic paint. So you can see how these shine and would look really good when you put the gold or the silver wire with them and some pretty beads. So, um, it's really a fun process, an easy process, um, and makes a really pretty uh, creation for your junk journals. And um, if you've, I mean, if you've watched my videos and you know that I'm all about texture, texture and organic and things that I don't think they have to be perfect to be beautiful. And so these aren't what a jeweler would consider perfect um, beads, but they're beautiful to me for what I need to use them for. So that's um, what I wanted to share with you. Um, one last quick thing. I have been making also some boho flower or boho feathers now i don't know if you were able to check out my my poppy video but on my poppy video i had some of these hiding on the cover and basically what you do to make these i'm not going to go through the whole process because it's a it's a simple process but I'll give you the rough idea. Let me get some um, fabric here. My scissors. So this is a piece of fabric that I have that has, um, that I painted with some polka dots on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just free form cut a shape of a feather okay and I'll do this and then if I need to trim it up later I can so here is the feather and what I want to do is I want to start taking off the threads from one side and what that's going to do then if I can get this started give me a second it could be because of the paint and what this is going to do is it's going to cause a frayed side you know what this could be because this blue jean is cut different Where's my other one? If you don't cut your fabric going toward the right grain or direction, you will, won't be able to shred it. So, yeah, you need to put, go for the stretchy part. So here's another piece I have, and I know this one will work. So I'm gonna cut out again um, a feather design, just freehand. And then we will start from the side and just begin pulling the threads out until you start to see the edge fray okay now you don't you you can 
um, what I have found most effective is just fraying one side. And I think it makes a really cool effect of just having one side frayed. Um, this is not my original idea, but I, I have um, tweaked it just a little bit by using um, the painted fabric. But you can use regular denim as well. And you just wanna um, continue to pull these strings out so that you can get a nice um, frayed look on the side. Now I'm not going to do all of this because I'm sure you guys know how to fray. I have not tried this with my muslin yet, but I'm going to, to see how it frays for me. Because those colors would make beautiful boho flowers, wouldn't they? So anyway, we continue to do this. If I can get that last piece. And we continue to pull the threads out until we get halfway. So once we get halfway, then we have this really interesting design. Okay, where we have one side is left plain and the other side is frayed and it looks more like a feather. Okay, now you can just leave them like this. You can put a what are those things called that you put with your crocodile? Oh goodness, my brain's going out the window today. Um Eyelets. You can put an eyelet on the end and then use a jump ring to attach it. Or you can, um, you know, how we were talking about on some of these, we wanted to leave this big piece here. You know, we can even hang some from here and make this a, a part of our dangle. So you can do it that way or you can take an eye pin which is what I did, is I took an eye pin and I beaded, um, put some beads on the eye pin, and then I poked a hole. Where did you go, babe? Okay, guys, give me one second here. I poked a hole in the top of it with my awl or my paper piercing tool. It's not laying here, is it? No. Ay Dios mio de los ejercitos. And it was just like great. Oh, here it is. I'm just blind because it's dark. Um, and and then you once you fill up your eye pin with whatever color you colors you want, then you can stick that eye pin in and make a loop. And here you have this beautiful boho beaded feather. And I think that's so cute and unique. Now, um, you can use this, like I said, as dangles, or we can do um, earrings if you like that style. Um, we can bead on, you know, bead some onto the actual feather itself. So you can do all kinds of things with these that make them unique. And I just think they're a really cool project to go with our boho beads. And now we have boho beaded feathers that we can use as well. Now all these little um, pieces that come out, I do save them because you never know when we need um, a bunch of threads. But there are my designs for tonight that I wanted to show with you. I'm sorry I've been 
um, a little bit missing, but get out an old pair of jeans and cut them up and start making your boho um, beads and making your boho feathers. Um, I just want to reiterate, don't think you have to go out and buy any kind of specific jewelry. You can go to the thrift and get um, necklaces and things that you can take apart or um, sometimes Hobby Lobby has a buy one get one free sale or 50% off sale and sometimes when they have that I'll go get some so whatever you decide to do um, to make your beads you know just make them with whatever you have um, I'm going to try some with um, some buttons I have not exactly figured out how I'm going to do that yet, but I will be back to show you, I'm sure. And, you know, keep your eyes open for different things that you can make with, um, with your fabric or your paper. You know, we, we have so much of it that we've purchased because we like the lace designs or we like the stickers or we like this or we like that but when we really um find out later that you know all of this we probably already had in our stash and didn't have to go out and spend a penny so i hope you guys enjoyed this one last thing i wanted to let you know <clears throat> And pardon me because I um, had some problems and I had to do this video twice. So I don't remember if I told you or not. But I am uploading some more things to my coffee shop this weekend. And some of them are digital images. Um, I, My friend Terry doesn't have a printer. So I am going to be sending her out a little care package of some images. Um, but if you go on my coffee site and there's something that you really want and you don't have a printer, please send me a message because I am willing to print them within reason. I'm talking like maybe no more than five sheets. I can copy them uh, for I can print them for you on copy paper or I can print them for you on cardstock however if I send them out it's going to be a higher price so um, I have to pay for my shipping and I have to include a little bit there for my printing costs but um, if you have you know something that you just have to have and you don't want to go out and buy a printer just for those images please reach out to me and um, I'm willing to work with you however I can um, I thank you Terry for always being so encouraging and wonderful to me um, Kim and Caroline as well and Michelle um, from the Hobby Hobbit um, I owe her a package and hopefully I will be getting those out next week um, it's always fun to get happy mail so that's all for now guys just please take care and thank you for joining me this evening and I hope you have a wonderful weekend bye for now